Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the IoT air quality sensor monitor project. So let's just jump right into it. So a bit of a backstory, this project started by Brent, who is a core dev on Adafruit IO team, put together this project. It uses Adafruit IO to log uh, data from an air quality sensor. So you can monitor and track the quality of your air in your surroundings. Very, very cool project. Uh, all the code and um, Libraries and things are documented in this learn grade, so definitely check them out if you want to build your own. Uh, Brent put together uh, an enclosure with off-the-shelf parts and Adafruit um, to create a weatherproofed enclosure for uh, the feather, the airlift, and the doubler feather wing. So really, really cool uh, way to to do something with off-the-shelf parts. Uh, this guide walks you through all of it. So my uh, task was to recreate the, an enclosure for this project with 3D printing and make it so that it's weatherproof. Uh, so really, this project is a bit of a, of a take on the Purple Air PA2 uh, sensor. This is a closed source. It's about $250 um, for this commercial product. And it's uh, all the air quality sensors are inside this cylindrical kind of dome. And it has a mounting bracket uh, for mounting it to the side of a house or building. So I referenced this design. Um, uh, looking at the dimensions and things to figure out, is this a, a good uh, kind of uh, enclosure design? So I, we looked at other DIY projects out there. This is a good one here that we saw. It's a good use of like off the shelf parts. This is PVC piping. So uh, folks are using um, PVC piping and some cable glands and some, uh, some tubes here uh, to create a waterproofed enclosure. So I was referencing other ones too, like this one here. Uh, this one uses uh, more of like how Brent was doing it, um, although it's more enclosed. Uh, they, there are all sorts of uh, weatherproofed enclosures. Uh, this is a real kind of square one that um, is, is kind of nice as well. So I was looking at that and uh, I really wanted to go with the cylindrical uh, kind of uh, dome shape. So that's what I went with. So uh, right after uh, kind of that, the next steps were to uh, create a 3D model of the, of the air quality sensor. Uh, so there are a few of them. Um, shout out to the GrabCAD community for uh, sharing their their stuff. I also uh, had to draw um, the air quality sensor, the PMSA 003i. I put that together, so I threw that on there so folks can download as well. Uh, but the we also carry Adafruit also carries the PMS 5003, which is a, a fairly popular one uh, from the same manufacturer, Plan Tower. Uh, so if folks want to get uh, an air quality sensor, they want to make their own breakout. You can get the parts here. Uh, but we also have a really nice uh, breakout, the Adafruit design. It has uh, Stemma QT connectors on it, so you can daisy chain uh, different sensors to it. And I created a 3D model of it uh, using EagleCAD and Fusion 360. Uh, so folks, you can download that 3D model here. So that has all the stuff and all the mounting holes, so you can create a really nice uh, enclosure for it. So that's uh, out there available. And um, I guess we'll just jump right into uh, Fusion 360 and take a look at the uh, kind of the original CAD stuff. So what I'll do is I'll kind of step back and show folks um, kind of where it started from. So really it was based on that Purple Air um, uh, commercial product. And what I ended up doing was I, I figured I'd create the cylinder first. Uh, and uh, in, on, in the inside of the cylinder, I have these two tabs. And those tabs are going to be used for mounting the bottom and mounting the PCB thing on top. So I got this bottom here and this will be the top. You notice that the tabs don't go all the way to the tip here because all of this will be used uh, for a PCB mount so that I have a plenty of room for uh, the PCB and the feather wings uh, to fit in there. So as I step forward through it, the design, you can see I'm starting to craft out that PCB mount. Um, so the PCB mount is only going to house, uh, it's, it's going to secure the feather wing doubler uh, to these standoffs here. So instead of uh, 3D printing the standoffs, I uh, opted in to use these uh, black nylon M25 standoffs because uh, they, they, they're they're easy to come by. I have a kit of them and uh, you can you can play with the different lengths of standoffs so you don't have to keep printing this thing over and over again. So I thought that was a pretty good idea. So as I step through, I start adding in the actual electronics. So uh, we do have 3D models of all of the components uh, available on, on GitHub and each each learn guide has like links to the uh, to, th to download those 3D models. So I have here the Airlift Featherwing, the Feather M4, and the Featherwing Doubler. So you can see here that the Featherwings get, they just press fit into the headers of the, of the Doubler, and the Doubler is what gets mounted to these four standoffs. Yeah. And there's plenty of room here 
uh, uh, to get a screwdriver and, and to drive um, the screws into these holes. Uh, one thing to note about the holes is instead of 3D printing threads or, 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 or uh, fastening screws directly into these, we actually used heat set inserts. Uh, so heat set inserts um, is a great way to make um, really robust um, threads. Uh, so if you're going to make a project and you need to disassemble it lots of times, you don't want those threads to wear out, heat set inserts is definitely the way to go. And we've done so many heat set inserts that we ended up creating a, a rig to make the process easier. So I thought I'd share that with folks. Uh, we did this a couple years ago now. It's a heat set insert rig. Um, you, so you can use a soldering iron and a special tip to make this a lot easier. And the rig just makes it so that you can um, press the, uh, so you can smoothly move the, um, the, the, the soldering iron down into the heat set. So you can see here in this, in this uh, little, this little gif here, uh, you can see how it's done. So uh, if folks, you're, if you're getting started with it, definitely check out this project. We have it fully documented. All the files and things are, are downloaded. Shout out to the folks who are building it and making remixes of it. Folks are like designing their own clamps and things for their own soldering iron. So it's really nice to see folks uh, uh, making this their own. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Um, and it also walks you through um, different heat inserts. All right, so once we figured that out, um, we started uh, working out the rest of the, the design details. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, so at this point, I'm starting to create the top. So the top of the enclosure is gonna be a bit of a screw thread. Let me see if I can just go all the way to the end of it because we're pretty much there. Um, so this is a screw top. And what's cool about it is I have this little piece of acrylic that I milled uh, so that I can actually see through and see if the lights are blinking and stuff. So that's an, an interesting way to do it. And now the next thing to talk about is like the mounting method for mounting this, this whole case to something else. So originally I came up with this 3D printed uh, mounting bracket and it has these really tall standoffs, but really not tall enough. So this takes quite a bit to, uh, to print because the standoffs are, are, are kind of tall and it's a bit of a thick thing. And another thing is like the, um, the, the method I used for attaching this was to create uh, um, these counterboard uh, standoffs. So the screw, like they're, they're really chunky because they have to accommodate the size of the screw head. So the screw head gets fitted all the way in here. And then on the inside is these little um, hex nut uh, recesses uh, so that you can press fit hex nuts into that. And then the screw uh, caps, caps that, uh, that hex nut. Uh, and just as a tip uh, for folks that are um, we plan to use like a hex nut insert this way. Uh, always want to think about the orientation of the hex nut. You'll see here that like the tip is uh, is is pointing upward. So when it's 3D printing, it won't have any issues um, with the overhang because it eventually uh, meets at the top there. So that's a really good way to do it uh, if you're doing heat inserts. Uh, I mean, if you're doing hex nuts inserts uh, and you're printing your case vertically, that's a good uh, thing to note. Also, a thing to note here is like. You notice that I've extruded like these flat edges. So if you're panel mounting something to a cylindrical surface, it's uh, it's always important to make um, a bit of an extrusion and flatten a bit of that side out. So that's what I did here for the mounting bracket and this thing here. So what is this thing? This is a cable gland, and cable glands are designed to make waterproof uh, cabling. So that th this thing has like an internal uh, rubber gasket and some O-rings that it comes with, so that when you panel mount it to something, it has a nice waterproof seal. Uh, so uh, th this is an injection molded thing that Adafruit uh, stocks and sells. So if we go over to uh, the learn guide, we can see here I'm using the PG7 style. Uh, and that's just the size of it. So you can see here it's PG7. Cable gland comes with all the little bits uh, that make it uh, waterproof. And it even has a nice like chunky hex nut. Uh, so that's what I uh, ended up using uh, for this design. Um, so yeah, so when panel mounting that, I also had to make sure that the inside was uh, also flat. So you can see here I have flat on the outside and flat on the inside there. Uh, so uh, that helps keep uh, everything mounted nice and flush because if you're trying to mount something like, uh, if you're trying to panel mount something to a curved surface, you're going to have a little bit of gap and that can allow moisture to seep in. So that's why uh, making a flat surface uh, helps out quite a bit. All right. So at this point, I prototyped this out. It's ready to go. I printed it out, and it, it, it worked out pretty well, but I really wanted to add a different like aesthetic to it. I wanted to make this look like something that looks really cool on the side of my house or building. 
So I started thinking about like um, what would look great on the side of your house. So it was something that looks cylindrical. I started thinking about like windmills and then farms and then silos, grains, grain bins. And then uh, I started searching around and I came up with this term, silo house. It turns out that a lot of folks like to uh, get abandoned or, or, or ho however, or like, like run down old silos from farms and retrofit them into modern homes. So if you take a look here, this is what inspired the, the, the final design. They look so cool. So I figured, let, let me make this into uh, a silo house, right? So I figured I'd I, I, I tweaked the dimensions a little bit to make it look more like a house. It's already cylindrical, so really all I had to do was create a roof and a little bit of windows and like a door frame. So this is what I ended up coming up with. This guy over here. Uh, so you can see here I got like a door frame, we got some windows, and a nice roof. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, but first, let me talk about like the the mounting bracket. So originally I had this 3D printed mounting bracket, and that works fine. It's okay. But I ended up just completely scrapping that idea and using standoffs. So these are really, uh, these are 26 millimeter uh, tall standoffs. Um, you can get them in all sorts of different sizes, but this made it so much more better because um, you don't have to 3D print the standoff, so that reduces hours. And this is a metal standoff, so it's really strong. It's not gonna break. Uh, and uh, the style of it is a, a, a male, to female end, so MF style. So it's really easy to press fit the um, the hex nuts into the spots, and then just fasten uh, fasten the the um, the standoff into those uh, capped hex nuts. So that makes the assembly a lot easier uh, and a lot more rigid and strong too. And you can play around with the different lengths because depending on where you're mounting this thing, you might need to have some more clearance. So this cable gland, it's not here, but it's fairly tall, so you want to have that elevation there uh, so that it's offset from the surface that you're mounting to. So that made mounting so much easier and much more stronger as well you know, going in this way. So I really like that. All right, the bottom's about the same. This is where uh, the components are um, nested or, or they're, they're mounted to. So this is the air quality sensor. We did have to break, uh, like expose the fan and the intake and also the uh, pressure temperature sensors right here. So I had to make a little hole for that. Um, but interesting, uh, the windows here, the way uh, they are designed is that they're more of like a recessed uh, design, and that is really neat. So uh, one thing to note, let me go ahead and kind of isolate the, uh, the case itself so we can get a look inside. So you, you have this window, and if you look on the inside of the case, we have this extrusion, and really why that's there is if we take a quick measurement of the inside and the outside, so basically the shell, the thickness, the wall thickness of our enclosure is one and a half millimeters. So when I am 3D printing it, it's actually not printing any infill because it's so kind of thin that it's all perimeter. So there's two, uh, two uh, perimeters that are going across, so really it's like four uh, lines, and that's all pretty much 100% infill because it is all perimeter and it's so solid. Uh, so that's why I have it. it. If you measure it out, it comes to one and a half millimeters. So that's the thickness that I chose. And if we do another measurement from the outside of this window to the, the inside of the window, you see it also has a one and a half millimeter thickness. So I'm trying to keep, uh, when I cut into something, you want to extrude on the inside as well to accommodate for the thickness and maintain consistency. Uh, and if we do a, a cross-section analysis, you can see here that um, all of the little bits and chamfers and those edges there all have that consistency. Nothing's too, nothing ever gets thinner than a millimeter and a half. So that's really nice. And you'll see here like the frame and stuff. Uh, that's just printed with, with whatever infill and that ends up being okay. Um, so that's, that's nice there. All right. Um, another thing about the windows is this works out really well for this front window, but the side windows, you notice they're actually different. They're not recessed. They're actually extruded out as an emboss. Um, so the reason why I did that is because if I, when I tried to do a cut recessed window on the sides, um, well, I started eating into the tabs. These internal tabs are pretty critical to the design and I don't want to change how that works. So I need to figure out a better method of designing the windows. So instead I made them, I made the windows frames extruded. And then, uh, at the bottom here, I made sure to do a, uh, a drafted edge so that, um, they can 3d print without any supports. Uh, and then these windows here also have uh, drafted edges uh, so that they can print just fine without any supports. Uh, so that was nice. 
And if you actually, when I look at um, actual reference images of real ones, you can see that they kind of mix and match uh, those different styles of windows as well. So you see some of the houses have a, a more of a, a frame that's extruded out, and then some have like more of a cutout on the inside. So I thought it was nice to kind of mix those two together and get more kind of uh, detail and uh, differentiation in the uh, in the style of windows. Uh, so I thought that was pretty neat. And then uh, it, was a, it was a bit of like a, it, it does two things. It aesthetically looks good, but also practically it works well because I couldn't do this, this style of window. Because again, I would have ate into these internal tabs and didn't want to do that. So uh, that's a good kind of way to avoid that from happening. We still got the same kind of screw top thread, but instead of like your basic top here, I designed another top to really look like a window, uh, a window, a roof. Uh, so I've been talking about windows, so of course it's on the mind. Uh, so the roof, I, I cleverly named it top roof there. So here it is, it's got 10 edges, it's got the same threads. And what's cool is that um, I ended up putting, I ended up 3D printing a, uh, an O-ring in Ninja Flex. That way I can create a, um, a nice seal. When I uh, screw this on, it really grips onto that O-ring and it creates a nice seal so no moisture gets in from the top. So that worked out really well. Um, and yeah, the, uh, the, the, the roof, <laughs> it also has a bit of a thickness here um, so that it's not printing a solid thing. It, um, I ended up doing a revolve to cut through this here. And then this overhang here prints just fine because it's a small opening. It's got a fairly small radius. Um, so it was able to print just fine without any supports as well. All right. So that's pretty much uh, the, the, uh, the whole story of the case. <laughs> um, so some cool little techniques and things uh, that I learned by doing this. So I hope folks are inspired to uh, use them in their projects. Uh, this is all open source, so folks can download the CAD files. You can download the individual components as well if you want to recreate uh, a project with similar components. So definitely check it out. Again, it's a learn guide. We cover, well, we have a couple of learn guides now, right? Uh, so you can check out the, the main learn guide here. We walk through the assembly, wiring, and coding, and even setting up your dashboards in Adafruit I.O. Definitely check it out. And then the last thing I'll let you know is with the data, I've been running this uh, for a good couple of days now, up to a week. And I've been logging data, so it's been really fun to see my um, my air quality index change over time. And I'm tracking it here. You can see on the on the weekday, on the weekend, there was, it really spiked pretty high. And I was able to find um, what was going on there. And you can see here we can track the temperature as well. It's pretty hot out there right now. And uh, uh, we actually had a tropical storm come run through here, so we had a lot of rain. It was really nice to uh, really put the case to test. Um, it's still running, operating just fine. It's the the humidity. Uh, while, when that tropical storm was going through, it was like around 80 to 90 percent. So it's like super wet out there. Uh, but it's all working out, and, and, and um, I'm going to keep tracking on it and letting folks know how, how good it, how, how it'll fare in a year from now. So we'll see uh, if it, it survives the Central Florida heat. But definitely check it out. I hope this inspires you folks to check out the air quality sensors from Adafruit. You can get the links down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.